so here on a heating issue call we've got us a 2015 unit here that's three tons of cooling slash heating and they're saying it's not heating I can feel just a slight warmth there on the discharge slash hot gas line and I checked the air filter and it's fine so let's go back in here and grab the tools and see what we can find out what's going on so basically filter's fine fans running so uh, why the electric strips didn't come on is beyond me got a little bit of a shake going on there okay let's um I'm gonna put my gauges on it honestly it's gonna jump right to it just really no no real warmth coming out of that thing so let's put the gauges on and see what we get all right we're gonna take off the hat here it's not not really good for keeping my ears warm when we got the snow Outdoor temperature today is uh, probably about 18 degrees, I bet, something like that. Let's see what we got going on here for pressures. I can just about guarantee you from my experience that it's low on refrigerant. I like bleeding it that way. That way I know I'm clean up to here. All right, so let's see what our chart says here. All right, it appears it's gotten a little warmer out here. It's 25. So, and of course, you know, that's just the way it rolls. That's the way it rolls. It's going to a defrost right when we're ready to get started. <laughs> Gotta love it. Gotta love it. So this unit is a 36, like I said. So, indoor temperatures in the 70s, and outdoor temperatures between 20 and 30s. Let's get this stupid thing out of a defrost, which I don't know why in the world it thinks it needs it. This obviously is not an on-demand defrost. So we're going to speed this up a little bit. Usually that would work. I'll tell you what, let's... There, thank you. Yeah, there we go. It's slow. I'm used to immediately switching over. What in the world did we do here? What is that? Oh, they just taped it kind of together-ish. Is this two stage, is it? Sure looks like it might be. It's building a little bit of pressure there. I don't want to jump the gun too quickly here. But, like we said, we should be somewhere in that 300 to 325 mark area. And then somewhere around the 80 to 60 suction. Yeah, we're, we're off a little bit there. Curiosity, see what our subcooling is. Subcooling technically... It's 23 and that's going off a liquid line there which liquid line is running 60 degrees coming back from the evaporator and you got 83 there so that's 23 huh it's not extremely low if that is what's wrong with it it sure is seeming that way that's a lot warmer than what it was I wonder if we got something weird going on here. Can't help but wonder if it had something to do with the thing going into defrost like it did. And usually that defrost control I think closes. <sighs> it's normally open. So it closes when it starts to count. It's gonna open when it's warm again, so drop in temperature. So yeah, we did right by yanking that. That kicked it out, so. Usually with like a Linux board, if I hit the speed up terminals, it would have kicked right out, but evidently not with this one. So let's just run a little longer here. 
or a jump in to add anything to it, which I hate charging these things in the winter. But like I said, I about guarantee you since we scan that evaporator, we're gonna find a leak. I guess one of the things that kind of bothers me is why the electric strips heat uh, didn't kick on and bring the uh, temperature up. So we probably got more than just a refrigeration issue, which is kind of concerning. Let's go ahead and see what our actual discharge temperature is off that uh, evaporator. So I finally found one of these in ductwork somewhere, and uh, they're kind of slow about getting to the temperature. Holy crap. Everybody make fun of my uh, thermometer I normally use because it's been a little bit, and there's a reason why. Look how slow that thing is. And why am I getting 58 degree air coming back through here? I mean, it's got a hellacious amount of cold air coming back to the furnace. 58 degrees, I mean, it ain't no 58 degrees inside the house. They got a wood burner running in there. So 58 degrees coming there. Let's see what we got up here. Let's just see what we got. It's probably why the freaking pressures are so flipping low. All right, so we're up here in the attic. You can see right there, some of the plastic is ripped off that return. A lot of it, actually. What in the world's going on with that? Kind of goes down there, so we have to follow it, which is not real easy to do. But, yeah, this, this insulation crap's got some issues. That's a return air. I mean, that's, that's not very good. I don't know who sliced that thing or if it's just getting brittle, but that's not, that's not good. Not good at all. There's another one for return. It's all chimichanga'd. That right there don't look good on the side. It don't look like a good 90. Well, it's gonna be real good to get get down in there and not fall through the ceiling. So I can't do it with the foam, so we'll get over there and see what we can find. All right, just looking at how they did this duck work, there's no way our people did this. This must have been existing. So this is some hacked looking stuff, and you can tell the cheap stuff they used just deteriorated. It's completely messing off that. I've never seen anybody run it round to the end and then split off the end of a round with ducks coming into. This is a return here. And they are. Oh, that's great. Look at that. Electrical wires up in the attic like that. That's nice. They don't really have that much insulation up here either. You can see the return there. I crawled all through there. But all that sheathing, which I know ain't a lot of our value, but it ain't helping it none not having it. But I mean all the duck work, you might as well, if you're gonna fix some of it, you might as well replace all of it. It's bad shape. They really could use some new insulation, more insulation up here. This is uh that cardboard cellulose stuff. They do not have that much up here. So uh, I don't know what all I can do to help out with that. I don't carry enough to do a whole house on the truck. So, I'll go ahead and crawl back over here and see what we can do with this thing. Make sure it's working as good as we can get it. All right, but the only thing I can do with that is tape the thing back up so at least it isn't completely losing all of its R value. But that there, none of it's split open, even though it's missing it there and there. If you guys think it makes a humongo difference, I'm sure it don't hurt, but I mean, I don't feel no air leaking out through it, but you guys leave a comment down below. But the only thing I can do for right now is seal that. I don't think that's the what's giving me an extra 10 plus degrees of gain in the return, but I'm going to go ahead and get that done real quick. You can see how much that ate up, and that's what it looks like, which ain't pretty. But it's at least holding the insulation together, not just uh, the spiral wrap just being shown. So let's go down and see if it makes a difference, but... I'm going to tell him, you know, good chance it wouldn't be a bad idea to replace all of it. But you know what kind of money that's going to cost. So it is what it is. I'm going to go ahead and go down there and see what we can do with this. All right, I think it was 50-something before. We got 61.3. Uh, notice this isn't insulated from what it sounds like. At least that is. And when this door is shut in here, it probably keeps it a lot warmer in here. And it probably isn't as bad, but yeah, it's not... Nothing to write home to mama about. You can tell electric strips are probably on. 
All right, so now that we know the incoming temperature is more like 60, we come over here to the 30 and 20 mark. It should be between 262 and 286. So we aren't off by much, unfortunately. I'm gonna say he's just, he uses the wood burner most of the time. So it could be as high as 286 if you wanted to go with the uh, 30 degree mark. Yeah, let's go 65 on the liquid temperature, 85 for the condensing temperature, 19 degree subcooling, not too far out of line, what I'm guessing. So. I don't think that's gonna make a big difference. We could uh, try unhooking some of the strips so they're not running, see what the actual tree rises across it. I would guesstimate probably today, you'd be lucky you get somewhere between 14 and 17 degree rise. All right, so we're checking them right here. And once again, as always guys, don't do this if you're not trained. Not responsible for you killing yourselves and getting electrocuted. These are for entertainment purposes only. All my strips are working, so we're good to go on that. I just basically covered the door up, see what we got. So we got basically, it looks like 15 kW there. Yep, that's what we got. So electric strips are working just fine. Wiring looks okay. There's our speed settings. Comfort is what we got there. Set for 36 tons or 36,000 BTU. Strip heat there set for 0 to 20. That's correct. It pretty much made this thing brand dead. Okay, it's fan on low. So, I mean, it's it's wired right, set up right. Refrigerant's pretty darn close. I'm going to say there ain't nothing wrong other than the poor ductwork. Uh, everything looks pretty good. Yeah, so we're running 110, 111 up there with 60, so 70, 80, 90, 100, there's 40, there's 51 degree rise. So the extra strips must have came on. Um, go out and check our pressures again, see where we're at. I don't like going off pressures only. We can give it a little squirt, but I don't think it's going to do much. I don't think it's going to do much at all, honestly. Especially with the subcooling looking like it's about there. You really aren't supposed to charge these in the winter time. It, uh, what's this normally run for subcooling? 13 for a uh, for summertime cooling. And we're running about 20 in heating, which they never usually tell you that, but subcooling subcooling in all reality. Kind of gives you a good idea if you do it more often. So, we'll weigh in maybe a half a pound, something like that, see where that puts us at. I don't want to go extraordinary here and go stupid. This beast probably holds a, cr a crud ton. Yeah, 13.7 pounds. I'd be kind of tempted maybe to check that evaporator for leaks first. Let's do that for precautionary reasons first. This is 2015. That's an aluminum coil. I haven't had too many leaks on these. I have had leaks on the TXV. I'll do a scan on it real quick, but this is not the one I was thinking, so it's probably fine. Then do a scan real quick, let it build up some uh, residual refrigerant if it's leaking any. All right, so we made some changes in there. The uh, thermostat was set up for three degree differential for the auxiliary heat. They had, I think, auto mode for first stage to second stage. I set it for uh, 10 minute minimum or maximum runtime before it upstages to second stage. Basically uh, left the, the uh, auxiliary at three degrees. Changed it to the setting where anytime it's below 40 degrees, the carrier has a, an option where you can shut the fan G signal off and it'll lower the fan speed so that you get better heat out of it when it's colder outside anytime below 40. So that will get you a little bit better air, which obviously it's already doing some of that now. So right now we should be on first stage and uh, we're at 70-ish. So uh, second stage should kick in here in less than 10 minutes. And then 
it'll still be a three degree lag for the uh, auxiliary heat to kick on. Uh, customer's aware of what's going on and um, he just basically said as long as he knows what's going on and what to expect that uh, you know he'll deal with it uh, when he gets back from vacation. We're still about 61 and a half there, we're 73 here. Still waiting to see whether or not first or second stage is kicked on yet, which it should be or real close to it here. So right now it's kind of sad. I mean 61 and a half minus 73, about 12 degrees. So not uh, 11 and a half, not real impressive. I would say we're definitely in first stage. Look at that head pressure, it's only 235. I mean, we had a little bit of a leak when I walked away. My hoses leaked around the fitting there, hopefully. <laughs> That didn't lose that much. You can see we got quite a bit of oil, which is great. Let's see what the subcooling is. Yeah, it's only nine. <clears throat> I don't have the suction probe hooked up because it's not worth checking right now. I'll give it a couple more minutes. It should jump up to high stage. It must have just changed. You can see the pressure's jumping up pretty quicker. Stage two is now on. We're still at 61.5 with 81. That made a little bit of a difference. That's a lot better than what it was doing. So combination of the fan speed, because that's raised my head pressure a little bit. So if you subtract those two, 61.7 minus 81.1, let's just round it to the nearest degree. Let's just say 62 minus 81. It's about 19 degree rise, which is pretty good. When it's uh, 25 degrees, 23 degrees outside. <clears throat> a lot better than what mine's doing. So, uh, I think we're going to go ahead and leave it there. I gave him a little bit of a squirt just to make up for what he lost when my hoses leaked. And uh, I think that's going to wrap this one up. Um, basically, make sure that you guys check all of your supply and return temps. Um, you know, going off to supply only would have screwed me if I would have not noticed that the return air was warm. <clears throat> I sometimes do that more often when I'm in a situation out here where it's in a garage and the attic is uh, where the ductwork has to go through. So it, uh, it appears to me that it's working pretty good. And uh, always double check your thermostat to make sure the programming on it is set correctly. So it's going to wrap this one up guys. Just uh, be aware of your surroundings and always keep looking until you find all of the problems. If you guys enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Until next time, we will catch you on the next one.